4 o'clock, picking up Dick Mason. We're getting ready to go on our big moose hunt. We'll uh, leave here and go pick up John Rance. That's my stuff in there. we got to straighten it out some. Where are we going, Dick? Going up to Newfoundland. All right. The man says we're going to Newfoundland, so that's where we're going. Okay. Yeah, this is this is who we're spending the uh, the night with. So I'm gonna let him uh, have the floor here. Tell us who you okay, are. Well, uh, my name is uh, Arthur Gregory, and I'm from uh, in Hampshire. And this is my friend Dick. And Art has a very famous. What was it? An uncle? No, great grandfather. Great grandfather. His great grandfather invented the donut hole. His name, you're laughing. His name was Hanson Gregory. Look it up anywhere. He invented the donut hole by putting a, a biscuit on the steering wheel on a boat. You know how they stand? Put it on there. Invented the donut hole. How about that? Well, how Hanson much Gregory. nourishment? How much nourishment does that donut hole have? <laughs> There's a picture of them at the head of the stairs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is. That's These are the bunks where we're sleeping. Dick will be sleeping right there. I'm sleeping up there. And uh, right over here, John. John's already sacked out. He, he had. <laughs> Let me put my good night cap on. <laughs> he's a uh, he's already sacked out but we're gonna make him clean up some he hadn't cleaned up since we left home so I'm on vacation we, got, up. we gotta clean him up some we've even got a radio we have a window and we have a TV Dick tell me what you thought about this right across here this morning uh you know i don't remember much of it uh, i went to sleep and only got up once the rest of the time i was sleeping somebody said the boat was rocking but i didn't know it it was rocking rocking good john how'd you do oh it was it was it was bad it was rocking pretty bad i, I had to strap myself in <laughs> <laughs> you slept pretty good though yeah, I think I did. Yeah, everybody did. We're getting off the uh, ferry this morning. Pretty big, pretty big ship we're on. And, uh, we'll be heading to pick up Chris at the motel where he is, about a three hour drive. Get him to do about a two more hour drive to meet our outfitter. Had a good night's sleep. Way to Deer Lake to pick up Chris. It's still not very light outside. We just left the dock. Mr. Mason is driving. countryside in Newfoundland. A little more rugged than what I thought it was. We just saw a fella dressing a moose on the side of the road back down there, ways behind us.
they're sleeping. That's the water. The ocean. show everybody that uh, going to see this video how much John ate. Look at all those chicken bones there. And lots of french fries, but you don't see those anymore. A lot of, a lot of chicken bones. All right, we're at Bennett's Lodge eating. This is where we've been waiting on our guide. Been here for quite a while. I think he's having some plane trouble and they're working on him. Like one of the server said uh, yesterday they weren't flying so he had to get a helicopter from someone to come in and take some guys either in or out I don't know which but this is called Bennett Lodge this is where we had uh, our lunch today and we're just hanging out waiting Hopefully I'll be here within 30 minutes or so, I don't know. Over and out. Beautiful. You guys, that's a plane we're going to be taking out.
This is the cabin we're staying in. We just unloaded everything. And not sure, this is Sunday morning. Not sure whether we're going, they're going to take us out this afternoon or not. Right here is a little house. They have a generator in. That's the wood pile. And then uh, this is kind of the general area. Way down there is the plane that we came in on. And he's going down to turn around to take off uh, to take two guys back. They were out, and they just got a bull. Uh, they, they had bad weather. There was just two of them. Uh, they saw several, but uh, just got to kill the one bull. Uh, Sunday afternoon and this is the area that we came to after we ate lunch got in this morning late late morning and uh, right down through there we saw uh, he saw a cow and then he saw a bull and then uh, he and Chris went down made a stalk on it Chris shot twice I haven't heard from them about 15 minutes or 10 or 15 minutes after he shot, I saw a bull walking on to your left as you look at the picture, uh, on up toward this lake. So I don't know whether that was a cow that came out and he killed the bull or he just missed the bull. I'm not, not sure. But across the distance, a long ways over there, maybe a thousand yards or so, seen all told counting the one that Chris we got into with Chris I have seen seven moose several of them were pretty nice bulls I didn't didn't even bring my binoculars out today this afternoon I'll take them tomorrow but I was looking through my scope and I could see he had nice antlers all right tell me about it there Chris Oh, I'm wait, wait. I don't have it open. All right, tell me about it there. There you go. The perfect gun rack. How far was he? I don't know. How far was 250? he? 250. Oh, no. Uh, about 200. But he, uh, he was across the uh, water, and he called him in and came around, but he went the wrong way. So we had to reposition, and my first shot went overhead, and my second shot dropped him, and we never found where I actually shot him. Oh, is that right? Uh-uh. So I see it's a good shot. So he, uh, he just dropped. All right, get over there with him. Okay. And then we had to walk a long, steep ways. <laughs> All right. So. Okay, tell the camera who you are, who you guide for, and so forth. My name is Gary Kelly. And I guide for Portland Creek Outfitters, owned by Leonard Payne. How many years have you guided? This is the 10, ten years guiding. All right. And he took, he's took. he got some rookies here and got one within, uh, how long were we out? Uh, hour. <laughs> hour? Say, from, no, not long at all. Yeah. From the plane, a bit of hour and a half, time the plane pitched and had yeah. something to eat. And, all right. That's great, son. That's great. Guy's been packing out elk. You got some on there? Do what? You got, you got some meat on there? Some meat. Huh? Yes, sir. These these fellows went in and packed. Uh, packing. Is there some still down there? You got all of it? He had two. Uh, yeah, he said he had two of them. Hey, buddy. You're tired. <laughs> uh, you tired? 
see here. Well, Tell me about it. Well, we saw him, and Gary forgot I was an old man and just rushed me back here. What were you doing? Six, seven hundred yards? Six, seven hundred yards, yep. And uh, he, uh, we didn't see him. He made some calls, and uh, first time I saw him, Chris pointed him out. Had you seen him when he came out? Yes. Uh, yeah, behind the rock. So, uh, Made two shots. I don't know where they hit him the first one or not. I may have missed him the first, but the second one he went down like a rock. Uh, just went over. So nice, uh, nice moose. 300 with me back. 450 yards. 450. Alright, each one of you tell the camera who you are, what we well, did first, today. Herman's guide. My name is Gary Kelly. Guide for Leonard Payne's Outfitters, Portney Creek Outfitters. We have a beautiful bull, 11 point bull. Herman shot this set approximately 450 yards. Nice shot on it. Beautiful shot. One shot and it's dead. Clean kill. Uh, okay. He's... Uh oh, it's not. Alright. day. But a rewarding one. Two. But our group got two uh, two bulls today. Chris got one yesterday. So in a day and a half hunting we've gotten th three. Uh, that's about all I can say right now. Great job. Dick, tell me about it there, bud. Well, we saw the bull and a cow up on top of the hill and walked up over and after him. And nice young bull, four points. Got some good meat. Uh, emptied the gun a couple of times, just giving warning shots and so forth. I, uh, I, I counted seven. Huh? I counted seven you shots. You counted seven shots? I'm not sure how I many. I meant to shoot eight, but I ran out of bullets. <laughs> <laughs> he kept saying, shoot, shoot, shoot. And I knew he was dead when uh, I how first far, shot. About how far was he? About, uh, about 200 yards. 200? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, congratulations. We got, we got three now. Two yep. young bulls and a, uh, I don't know how old the one that I got would be. Five or six, I guess. Okay, congratulations, Dick. Good job. This is the kitchen. A very good cook. That's the smallest guy right there in camp. So everybody else is huge. <laughs> 
Tell me your name. Vernon. Your name is Vernon. He doesn't have a last name. Just Vernon. Too bad to have a last name. <laughs> Lavers is my last name. Here's our What's cook your right over last here. Hi. Tell the camera who you are and how long you cook. My name is Jacinta and I've been here three years. She does an excellent job. And it's a excellent pleasure. Job. Glad you enjoy it. We appreciate it. This is her husband. He's the guide for John Rance. Tell the camera your name and how long you've been guiding. My name is Lawrence Offrey. And I've been guiding around about 30 years. About 30 years. He's an old guy. <laughs> he started when he was two. Oh, he started when he was two. And this is a guy who got, got a moose today. Yeah, I never uh, only go out hunting. What do you, what do you think about this hunt, rivers. Dick? Oh, it's a great hunt. Great hunt. Great food. Great fellowship. Agreed. Great hunt. Amen. Great sleeping. Hi. That's my son. I didn't know oh, I'd ever have a son look that rugged. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell the camera what you got. What do I have? I've got coffee and I just had apple. And well, what what did you get here though? Oh, I, well, I already told you. I got. A oh, you already told us you got one. Yeah. Well, repeat it. Some people may forget. <laughs> well, I got some a, old uh, people. <laughs> <laughs> I got a six point bull. And that guy there, he's not very nice. He's making fun of old people. <laughs> This is the lake that's right out in front of the uh, cabin that we stayed in. In fact, I'm standing on the uh, front porch. What I want to show here is you can't walk just anywhere. Uh, no way can you walk through this mess. Uh, guy that our guide, when we went in to get elk twice, mine and my son's, Chris, he took an axe, always carried an axe with him, and he would chop through in places and we would slide through but uh, they have big timber here on Newfoundland, but not, not right here. We're at the edge of the big timber where we're hunting. Uh, but it's uh, not nearly as long as that you have to climb up with the uh, cabin that we stayed in. But boy, it's, it's rough. Uh, just not as much. Over here, the generator. That's the generator house, and they've taken that. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess that's water up above. I'm not. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Looks like water hoses and tanks. The cabin we stayed in. You can see the smoke going by there. Wood burner. That's the meat house right there. They've got screen around it. It airs airs out the meat. Then they take it on in. Like the plane comes out, gets it, and they take it to a, to a cooler. So we'll have to pay some storage fees on it. We just have ours chilled out. Most have the airs processed. So. But this is. Uh, a lot of what we walk on right here. It's spongy, lichens and little stuff. Uh, that's the boat dock. Chris and I got in a boat there every morning. Well, two mornings. Afternoon and a morning. And we came right around. Didn't get too far off the shore there. And they took us right over there where you see the bear spot coming down. We docked right there and walked up. And then we walked up across those rocks.
behind or to my left the way I'm standing and this morning the uh, guides have gone over two of them to get my elk you can see those rocks up there and the trees it's down along beside those rocks and you see the boat That boat they had to make their way up through and that is rugged getting up through there because we could not walk across from where I shot it uh, but I shot it right up in there and they'll be going up in there to uh, to get it this is the uh, two of the guides they've been out getting my uh, meat just lost them they're coming in now. It was a, he had to take a chainsaw, go up through the, all the scrubby pine, fir, spruce, whatever all these are, to uh, get them a trail. All right. wants to go after bear so that's the guide and Chris and Dick I'm following them we just got off the boat coming across the lake we're up here pretty high in a bunch of rocks we're trying to get Chris a bear he's made some calls they saw some in here and they said this they don't moose hunt over in here they said bear have this place but we hadn't seen any. Had beautiful weather so far, but looking up at the clouds, we're supposed to start getting some uh, some bad weather coming in. Three of us have them. John uh, Rant still looking for his. Hadn't had any luck today. At up to this point, we still got uh, a few hours of hunting left. All right, tell me what you're making now. I'm making dough to fry. There's this fry. is my bread dough. Fried dough. And I'm going to deep fry it and do it with a little bit of sugar and vinegar. And John doesn't like it, does he? Sugar and cinnamon. Sugar, sugar and vinegar. No. Now. Yep. Sugar and vinegar for you. <laughs> oh, wait, you like that stuff there? She fixing? Oh, that's good stuff, man. Good stuff. I'll right. give her a few baking tips here. We'll be all right. All right. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> you get her straightened out, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what you doing right there with it? I'm deep frying this dough. <laughs> this is what all the guys ate yesterday while I was out trying to kill a moose. That's right. I had two plates piled up. And okay. Just want to show you what one of my hunters does all the time. Goes out, shoots a moose, come back, look like a dead man in a coffin there. I got the evidence on him, John. I'm going to do a song that I wrote last year, and it's about being in here at the camp and I ride in here at the camp. And Vernon never heard it before, so I'm going to sing that song now. He's going to record it. I know it is. All right. Let's you want to sing it? No, sing uh, it. I never heard it. We get aboard the little plane that takes us from Rathcon. To go into the cabin, it's only a ten minute run. It seems like we're just in the air and we landed in Geese Pond. Now this place will be our home until 
the hunting is done. I'm sitting in this cabin all alone in Geese Pond. The men are gone out hunting, they'll be gone all day long. I hear them on the radio, they talk about what they see. And then I will hear Wilford say, I'm going home for a cup of tea. Gary goes to Lady Western or down Boomerang Pond. Wilford goes to the phone rock or lunch rock across the pond. Lawrence goes to Tree Rock or Sally's Bog on Rimrock Hill. The hunters, they don't really care as long as they make a kill. The people are here from everywhere, but mostly the USA. They come in here to have fun and hunt just for a one week stay. It seems like they just arrive and then become your friend. And then the week is over and you're heading out again. I'm sitting in this cabin all alone on Geese Pond. The men are gone out hunting, they'll be gone all day long. I hear them on the radio, they talk about what they see. And then I will hear Wilford say, I'm going home for a cup of tea. The guides are Gary Wilford. Lawrence and me. We live in this cabin. We are like a family. We respect each other and we try and get along. And then in the evening we tell stories and have some fun. Now Wilford he's our mascot. He don't care what you do. He's in love with a mop and he calls her Bonnie Lou. <laughs> he sings and dances with her when he's had a few. He is surely a funny guy, but he helps us to make it through. I'm sitting in this cabin all alone on Geese Pond. The men are gone out hunting, they'll be gone all day long. I hear them on the radio, they talk about what they see. And then I will hear Wilford say, I'm going home for a cup of tea. And then I will hear Wilford say, I'm going home for a cup of tea. All and right, three. thank you, thank you. An old man died one day, dreaming of his home so far away. He must have known his words were dull in vain. Oh, take me home when it's Cape time again. I wanna go back when it's Capelin time again. I want to walk in the softly falling rain and hear again the lonely seagulls cry. Oh, take me home once more. I must have heard these words a thousand times, not ever caring what was on.